Hopefully my internet will be. Okay, I think we're live, everyone. Hey, welcome to the designer show after we're having this crazy, let's get started uh, fiasco where nothing was working, but now it is. So, hi. <laughs> Gotta love technology. Uh, Renee asked, uh, do you ever have a time when it doesn't hit, you don't have problems? And I said, yeah, I had that happen once. Um, <laughs> No, usually it works just fine. Anyway, welcome, everyone. Happy uh, weekend before the 4th of July. And I hope everybody's looking forward to a nice long weekend and relaxing out there. So we got a bunch of people logging in. Thanks for joining us today. We'll look forward to uh, sharing some information here about X14. John and Renee, how you doing? Doing great. Cool. Pretty good. Pretty good. You got a big crowd today. Cool. Do we? All right. We'll yeah. take it. It's a good topic, I think. You know, uh, all the new things in X14. There's so much information out there that uh, it's hard to keep up with everything. But, you know, I just want to share some of my favorite uh, new features. And I'm sure you guys have some new features we'll share. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, plan views, because that's a topic that tends to confuse the heck out of everybody. Um, so, although I think I finally have it figured out after all these years. Uh, <laughs> it is a little tricky. And then, Renee, I know you treat plan views a bit differently than John and I do. So uh, if we have time, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. So yeah, you guys got like anything you want to add couple, here? I feel like we could kill a couple of these sessions on X14. Oh, maybe yeah. we should do another a one. A couple? Yeah. About, about a day. A day? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the uh, program does have a lot of new features in it. And it really, they really done some really cool things and they continue to do cool things so um let's hope that they continue that let's see i am getting i gotta go do something here um I'm in the right browser okay i'm just going to show my screen here real quick it's not going to be exactly what we want to see uh let me share my screen. God, we haven't done this for a month, and it's like I got to remember where the buttons are. <laughs> and we pretty much took the month of June off uh, yeah. between uh, being a little bit on vacation and then COVID and everything else going on. It was kind of crazy. Uh, just ignore this on my screen. Hopefully, you guys are seeing the chat there. Uh, on the screen where uh, uh, you're viewing this, there's a little thing here. Get the X14 update PDF, and then you can check out what's new on the Chief Architect page. And if you're not on this page, so you're watching a video somewhere and you don't see these links, just go to chiefarchitect.com and go to, you're going to go to the, where it says um, right here, X14 update stuff available now. And you click on that and that's going to take you to this page where they list all sorts of things about the new features in Chief Architect or in X14. And if you scroll down and I did click on the wrong page, here it is. No, this is right. So you'll see this image here of that little house and you'll see a new feature summary title. And right below that's the link to the PDF that I'm talking about. So when you click on that, that's gonna open up this PDF and that's gonna list all the new features in X14. I spent my morning going through this, uh, the second time I've done that. Um, it seems like they've changed some things and added some things since they released X14 or I'm just forgetting things. Anyway, there's a lot of cool things here. We don't have nearly enough time to go through even a, a, a por portion of them in, in, to, and give them really what the attention they deserve. But um, again, I've picked out a few that I want to share that I've highlighted here in my PDF. So I'm going to get started. I'm just going to run through mine really quick because I, I picked out some goodies and I prepared a little demo here. And then John and Renee, um, I'm going to let you guys show some of your new features and if people have quite if you guys have questions um as we're doing this by all means type them in so i'm going to get started here uh, i'm just going to go full screen you, you don't need to see our mugs while we do this so let's do that all right so i'm in x14 and let's start with number one this is probably my favorite of all of the stupid little things that are that they've done i like this one the best it's when you do a point to point move okay so you've got this function down here point to point move okay and when you click on that you click point to point move and you highlight it the thing you want to move and then you move it you see how the you can see what you're moving now you never used to be able to do that you can see where you're moving it from where you're moving it to and then you click where you want to put it so uh 
That I, I like that a lot because you can do that with virtually anything. So anything you highlight, hit point to point, and where you want to move it from, where you want to move it to, you can now see all of the items move with that. I think that is really cool, and um, it's really a, a, a nice addition. So one thing I'm going to show you real quick, though, this is not in the updates. This is just a thing that I tell everybody. Let's set the hotkey for S for snap. So what you would do, I don't ever push the point to point button. All I do is push push the S key on my keyboard to activate the snap. So we'll go into your pull down menu tools, toolbars and hotkeys and hit customize hotkeys. Tools, toolbars and hotkeys, customize hotkeys. Okay. And when you get into customize hotkeys, you're going to type in point to point to, if I can spell, point. All right. And you're going to come up with this little item right here. What you're going to do is go down here and type in an S right here and then hit assign. But the, you're going to overwrite. Is, it, is this one that overwrites the arc? I think that's E. Whatever, whatever it says, just say OK to it and then click OK. And next time you want to use this function down here, all you have to do is push your S key and that'll have that function available to you. One of the nicest little tips, shortcuts that you'll use. It'll save you a ton of time of clicking on that icon all day long. So that's your predictive feedback. I like that a lot. Let's just keep going here. Uh, number two, there's one here that I was playing with that I couldn't quite figure out. So I'm not going to really get into it other than to say that um, First of all, Chief did finally fix, I don't know if it's called kerning or whatever it is on the text, the the, the blue the Chief Architect blueprint font. I created that font many, many years ago, sold it to Chief. They put it in the program and they did something to it to screw it up, but they finally fixed it again so that the text centers in a box and when you attach arrows to it, it works fine. <clears throat> so I have to, um, in my template, I had adjusted for that under attributes where I put a one inch space above the text by default, we can now set that back to zero and the text will now be centered in the box again. Finally, that, that one drove me nuts for a long time. Um, <clears throat> I told them about that years ago and they finally got to it. The um, thing that I was talking about, the CAD block layer defaults. And again, if you're looking at the PDF, again, I'm, I'm skipping past a lot of things. Uh, let me get back up to the top of the page. Okay, so I was just kind of running down the page. Here's your predictive edit feedback. <clears throat> CAD block layer default set. Set defaults. Not quite sure what this means. Um, I was trying to figure it out. That's where I did, um, remembered and, and discovered that she fixed the text. But the thing about this, and this is not new to X14, is when you want to edit a block, a block is a group of items put together. When you want to edit that, you have two options down here now. You can unblock it and edit it, or you can edit the CAD items with, you can edit the blocked items within the block without unblocking it. And this is really a cool feature in Chief because it gives you so much flexibility to change items in your plan without ungrouping things. So if you have all things grouped and set up really nicely, you can now change the things here. And when you are done making those changes, when you close that, it's gonna, you wanna save your changes in this CAD box and I'll hit sure. And that's gonna ask you, let's say for example, you're changing the size of a bunch of outlets in your plan. An outlet is a CAD block. Okay, so you go change that. And what you could do in chief now is say, if I made that outlet symbol smaller, I could say change every outlet in my plan to the new, the way I've done the CAD block, or I could say only do this one. And that is really cool. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to change a lot of things quickly in your plan. I'm not going to get into that. We just don't have time, but it's really a nice feature. And I'm really glad they did that. So I'm going to not save that. All right. So now I'm back to my plan. Do you guys know what that means in that PDF by any chance? CAD block, detail layer set defaults. I'm not quite sure what that means. I had to figure it out. I haven't messed with it much, but it, it seems like it would, when you when you put something into a CAD block, it changed it to the CAD default, right? 
right so it, is it saying that we can tell it what we want it to default to now we can set the defaults within the cad block itself possibly yeah. again i'm gonna have to come back to that another day um i just uh, i'm gonna have to find some tutorial on or something I'll let you know later all right let's go to the next item this one is really cool <clears throat> this used to drive me nuts what used to drive me nuts is I put some stools at a counter and then I wanted to change them all out to a different stool. And you can't just group select a bunch of stools and change them out to something else. At least you never used to be able to. Okay. Now in X14, we can do it really, really easily with a thing called library painter scoping. All right. So if I go in and let's go just take a 3D view of this uh, item right here. And I want to replace all those stools with a different stool. So this is a freestanding symbol. So I'm going to click on that st first stool. Well, first of all, I'm going to go to my library and open my library. I'm just going to type in stool. Okay, search for some stools. And I want to replace uh, the stools with a back, you know, with a back on it. Okay, so I want that to be part of my deal. So what all I have to do is once I highlight this here, when I go to the... Uh, 3D view, you'll see I can click, I could click on top of the stool and paste a new one. After I click this little button down here, look for these little icons down here. And there's a thing here called toggle library, library replacement mode. So I would click on that and you'll see you get these other buttons highlighting. So now what I could do is I could change just one part of an object. In other words, I could change one handle on one of the drawers on that cabinet. Or I could change all the objects in a room, which means I could change all those stools at once, or I could change all the knobs at once on that object. I could change everything on this floor or everything in the entire plan. So it's the same way it works for changing textures and things like that. So I would go here and I would click, let's just change everything in this room to the new stool. And when I click, I've got a whole bunch of new stools now. So it used to be I had to do one and then replicate them again, and it was just a real pain in the butt. Let's take that one step further and let's change um, one of these, let's change these knobs to something else. So let's just go type in knob, search for a knob. And I want to put that knob on one of the drawers, not all of the drawers. So now I would just click on this. I'm going to click on object, which means each drawer separately. And then I can click on one of those drawers. Let's see, am I doing this right? How come it's not doing it? I probably got the wrong kind of a knob, don't I? Let's go find this knob. There we go. Now it's the right kind of knob. And I could put that there. I did the whole object. Let's go and do that. Let's just do one drawer. So now I can see how I can change out just one drawer. So that's pretty cool. So you could put, you know, if you have an eclectic uh, um, cabinet, you could put different knobs on every drawer. So there you go. So that's pretty cool. I really like that a lot. Nice new feature. <clears throat> Used to be we'd have to open the cabinet, select it. I don't think we could change separate the hardware separately on a cabinet, could we? I don't remember. I don't think so. All right. Uh, my next one is um, copy and paste and explode bay windows. All right. I still hate Chief's bay windows. They're not really bay windows. They're walls with windows in them. Um but the thing that used to drive me nuts, okay, you could never copy a, a, win, a bay window and paste it somewhere else. Um, so, <clears throat> so that is the ability, just the ability to copy and paste the damn thing is really quite nice because we could never do that before. So, you, you know, you've had, how often do you have a project that has more than one bay window? You'd have to go spec it multiple times on your project. I don't, I think there was times when I would use edit layout to copy and paste a, a bay window. I think that worked. Um, but now we can. Now we still can't save that bay window into a library. So, okay, that's, you know, not the end of the world, but we can at least copy and paste it now. Again, Chief's not doing, you know, the, the bay window the way a bay window really is. You tip a window up into an opening and you can put casing on that opening if you wanted to. It still walls within a bay but it's a big improvement. So that's a nice feature. The other thing is you can now explode bay windows. Okay. So you've got this little icon here. 
which means you can now turn that into walls and windows. Okay. Uh, what does it do with this opening here? I have not tried this yet. To be perfectly honest, it looks like it leaves the walls up there. Okay. So I can I can explode it. And you can, you know, within the bay window dialog, you can change the wall type and all of that. So it looks a little better. Um, there are some nice settings there that it gets you closer to looking like a bay window. We still can't put automatic bottoms or automatic tops on them, but, you know, um, we have to do some work there. Anyway, that's a kind of a nice little thing. All right, next item on my list is um, the ability to get back to my floor plan here. Resize cabinet hardware. This is a little thing. It's like, yeah, big deal. However, it's kind of cool when you look at it. And it, it, it relates back to the library print painter thing. So let's say I want to put some handles on that door on these doors, but I want the handles to be a little bit different size. So I can go into the I do have to go into the cabinet here. And I'm going to go to the doors. And I'm going to go to the door drawer section here. And I'm going to go to door handle. I'm going to replace the door handles. So I could go here and I'm going to put a, uh, let's get a library option item here. And let's just go find a handle. See what comes up. I'm just going to grab the first thing I see and click OK. All right. That's some pretty big, nasty handles for those cabinet doors. So not to despair, I can now edit those handles because it will open this dialog. I could say, let's make those handles one inch wide, five inches tall, one inch deep. And there you go. And I could also reset where they are. I could rotate them. And so you've got just a lot of flexibility now to put the hardware on your cabinets with more control. So I, I like that a lot. That's a nice little feature. And have you guys seen that one yet? I don't know. Maybe you have. Okay, I got. I've got ten things here. Let's get to number six. Many dimension settings and changes. All right. So as you go through the list here, I kind of highlighted this whole section um, of dimensions. I mean, there's a lot of things here that I'm just not going to get to. There's some nice framing things. Um, oh, this is okay. I'll come back to this one a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> dimensions. Stack fra fra stacked fractions, um, it, it, just a ton of control in dimensions. They've done a lot of nice things with dimensions in X14. So if I go into Chief, you'll notice, see how I can display the dimensions now as a fraction like that? I think that looks really nice. So what you would do to make some of those changes, and I'll just briefly touch on this. So in my architectural dimensions, I'm just going to double click on the ruler icon. Okay, I could go into my defaults, going through the little wrench icon. I'm just going to click here, double click on that. So whatever you have displaying on this list, when you go there, you'll open up the defaults for that, that, that particular set of settings. So under um, general, we've got uh, different rounding methods. But they, you'll notice that they've changed the way you can turn on locate objects now and they've given you the ability to locate all the different dimensioning tools differently so i could locate things with my end and end dimension differently than my manual dimensions okay so you can turn different options on and off so if i didn't want to ever pick up anything except walls in my end to end dimensions i'm going to make sure i turn everything else off so that i only get walls in my end to end dimensions all right so you again you have that option to do these different things you can also do some wall options primary you know side secondary centers uh, so all these options were in previous versions they were just kind of a on a big screen that looked really confusing i think this is a much straight more straightforward way to do it so when you locate things on the interior on the auto exterior tools Okay, and then when we get down to the primary format, this is where you would set your your fractions, your di dimensions, so they show up like this. Okay, so if I go horizontal, it'll be like it used to be. If I go diagonal, 
or vertical. See how you can change that? And then you can change the size of the fractions. So if I make my fractions a lot bigger, you'll see they stick out a lot more, take up a lot more room. Maybe you want to make them a little smaller. Depending on the scale you're printing at, you want to be careful with that. Okay, so if you're printing a quarter inch plan at an eighth inch, you're not going to be able to read those very well. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, so, so nice new set. I, I like those settings there. I just think they're really nice. Can you go to extensions once before you leave that? <clears throat> Absolutely. What do you want to see in extensions? Uh, this is something I looked saw today. I'm not sure this is where to do it. But there was, there's an option to change multiple extension lines at one time. How far they're coming off your object you're dimensioning. I, and that's that doesn't look like the screen I saw. So um, I think that's going to be part of a individual dimension, isn't it? Under um, either that or you go select the extensions and then do it after there's because it was a, it looked to me like it was a modifying thing. OK, modifying the extensions. Um, but anyway, so here I can select one. If I hold my control key down, I can groups that I could do that or I can just select them all with my shift key. So now I can change that set of dimensions um, as a group. OK, so I, yeah, that's, probably, probably, that's probably it right there. Yeah, I can probably do a whole bunch of them at once, too. Yeah. So again, if I go to, oh, no, nope, it's not going to let me. I'm going to have to do one string at a time. Um, let me look at that again. Layer, secondary format, primary format. Yes, it looks like we have to do them individually. So I could yeah, do that, that like what I saw. Yeah, OK. But again, they keep adding more and more functionality to these kinds of things, which is really nice. Um, I haven't played with it enough to see, because sometimes there's uh, it'd be nice to have another string in here that does just certain things. So I'm going to look at that a little bit closer. Um, okay, so that's a bit of dimensioning. Um, number seven, add arrows to text items. This is really cool. So you know how you can you can do this. You can add an arrow and then type your text and then click OK. All right, that's cool. So now what you could do is you don't even have to add the arrow first. And you don't have to go click on the arrow icon. You just click on the edge you want an arrow, and you'll see a little diamond sticking out from that edge. Just grab that diamond and pull on it, and that'll add an arrow. So you just click on the edge, grab the diamond. So I always do these joist directions that look like that. So way if easier you, than it used to be. If you drag the drag the diamond with your right mouse button, you can make a two segment line. Oh, look at that. Yeah, or get your more. Continuous just keep behavior. going. Yep. Yep. We'll confuse the hell out of that carpenter. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's cool. Yeah, that's just like drawing any other line in chief. Again, everything we're doing is a line. When you draw something with your right mouse button, you're just going to continue drawing. You do that with walls, lines, and arrows. So good, good catch, John. I like that. That is nice because sometimes you do want to add multiple segments. Just hit escape when you're done, and you'd be good to go. That's a, that's a simple little thing, but it really can save a bunch of time. You don't have to keep, go up and click on the arrow icon or push the there a, hot key. Is there a way to make it so you can do it as an arc right from the get-go? Uh, no, but you can pull a line out and then right-click for your alt behavior. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Right mouse button is what I did that with. And if you hold your control key down while you do that, you can bend it freehand. There's not going to stop. What you would... What you would do is start just with a single line, short single line, and then grab the diamond and use your right mouse button to drag it around where you want it, right? And you use your yeah, break. I sent a suggestion to Chief to change that so we could get it in one action. Let's see. Well, maybe we'll talk to him in, in Coeur d'Alene. Maybe. Of course, that's not the end of the world to do that, but you're right. Um, I've skipped past one, transparency in vector view. I guess I went too quick there. Uh, this is another little thing, but I really like it because sometimes I want to be able to show my clients um, elements in a room that aren't rendered like this. I want to show more of the vector, just the math, you know, what shows the lines better. So when I switch to a vector view here, we can now see through the glass, through anything that's got transparency attached to it. We never used to be able to do that. 
um, in a vector view. So I think that's just a nice little thing that uh, makes it a little easier to short to do our presentations a little bit better. So something to be aware of there. Did, uh, did they add lines to the standard camera in 14 or 13? I don't remember. Lines, you mean the uh, under the uh, when we go into add lines to the standard camera now. Yeah, you can li add lines to any of the cameras. Right. Um, it used to only be under watercolor originally. Right. And then they started adding it to all of the other cameras, yeah, I don't believe. Remember one. Um, technical and vector are nothing but lines anyway. So it's just the watercolor, glass house, clay. There you can add the line drawing on top. And the so, standard now. And the standard, yep. Yeah. So it, just a nice way of, to show it. Kind of along the same realm, they, um, they added an alpha slider in your preferences to color fill, which that's a big one for me. Yeah, and uh, I think that has been there a while. No, that's that's X14. Is that, is that brand new in X14? Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking so of you, something so else. Now huh? you can have uh, your selection handles, you know, be solid lines and 100% and opaque versus your fill being um transparent and that's it's in preferences under colors under appearances and colors uh where <laughs> under uh, under prefer edit preferences and then appearance panel and then colors under oh, and colors uh, sub panel yeah and then so if you click on your selection fill now you have a um an opacity slider oh look at that yeah well oh, that is cool Never, never noticed that. There's a little gem that's hidden. Mm -hmm. So, so when you do this, it, you're going to see through it a little bit better. Nice. All right. Um, where was I? Seven. Did that. Eight. I have as this again. Silly little thing, but you can now copy and paste elevation cameras. You never used to be able to do that, um, and that's really nice to be able to do from one plan to the next. I, I, you know, I just was working on a plan with my son and he accidentally deleted all the elevation cameras on the plan he was working on. Fortunately, we were able to go back to the previous version, copy the elevation cameras, paste them in a new plan, done. Didn't have to redo everything. So it just, you never had the copy button available in previous versions. At least I don't think you did. Um, so, and, and then everything that's you've got in that camera will be saved. It, that'll be done in that copy. All right, um, nine, more camera view options in plan reference. What does that mean? Now, I don't really use this feature, but I might start using it now because um, it could really work. So if I were to go into a 3D view of this, and actually I have a camera I already saved for that. But let's go into our, our display, our, um, what we'll call it again? Our project browser, thank you. And if I go to uh, cameras and I look here where I've saved a camera. So this is really also really nice. So you can now click on over here in your project browser. Was this in 13? If it was, I missed it. Um, I don't remember all of that. That It probably was. I just didn't catch it. But here I've got an as-built versus new. So I've taken this. Let's consider what I've just been showing you an, an as-built. And then here's the new where I've got an addition attached to the as built. So I can now go in if I click on the floor numbers right here. And you'll see this thing down here. New features. OK, so what we can do with this down arrow is you can select a plan that you want to use. Choose an existing plan that you've drawn. OK, and what kind of view do you want it to be? So you've got all the different view um, they give you all the plan views here. I haven't even played with that. I have to look at that. Uh, but you've got more cameras now. What do we used to have? Just a glass house and was that it that we had yeah. before? Yeah, so now we've got so, yeah. so now I could go glass house. This is all we used to get. Just that. Nothing else. Okay, so now you can see what's new on this plan versus the old one. So this is the plan I'm in. And I'm actually overlaying a, a different plan on top of it by going here and clicking this option down here. If 
but now I can also go standard. I can make it rendered. So now it matches the, uh, the rendering here. So you can't even tell they're different now. So I've got two plans coming together. Looks like one, but they're two separate plans. Okay. Um, then I can go back here. I can also go do technical. So now you can see what, you know, what's the differences. This is the existing plan. This is the new stuff. And then finally, I could go down here to the last one, which is the vector view. And that just shows up a little bit differently. Not a big deal. Okay, so little thing. Will you use it? Maybe. I, I do know people I, that do use that. I think I'm going to start using it. I just saw that today. I think I'm really going to start using that. It is nice. I, it, I didn't use it. Before, all you had was a glass house. It's like, okay, so what? That didn't help. I think it'll make it easier for the for my clients to illustrate to their building departments what's going to happen. Exactly. I think we have it in um, cross section views now too. I yep. can't remember I if we did right. before. Yep. Oh yeah, that would be kind of nice too. Yep. So again, yes, if I so go... you can you can truly do an as built and an addition separate from each other yeah. if you want to. Yeah, with a lot more clarity now. So if I go again, if I go pick out a plan, so let's say here's the new feature. Um, yeah, new features demo. So this is one I've drawn the addition on. See how it shows my interior walls here as being new and the addition is being new. This is usable now because now I can actually make this all part, you know, one plan. Again, will I use it much? I don't know yet. Um, that's to be determined. So if I render it standard, it looks a lot like one plan. If I go to technical illustration, now we can see Again, it really highlights what's new and what's existing. And then down here, last one, vector view, same kind of deal. So it just shows more in line. It shows a little bit brighter here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, I think that's really some a nice feature. So if I go glass house on the existing, and then now you can see, because the original plan I was working on is, is uh, laid on top of the existing it's, it doesn't you can't really see the difference but so we can also switch the camera views for the the plan we have open okay so now here you can kind of show it in color so you got a lot of flexibility here with how you can show things again silly little thing okay well, let's move on last thing that i really like um is on the layout page so again i've got a, a, a link here so at any time you can use the plain text tool this tool right here you can type text in your plan and you can add a link to that text so you have the text you see on your plan and then the link you would use when you want to open the, the link to that you can open a web page you can open a file on your computer so when you see this icon down here it means it's linked to something there's a link in there when i click on that it's going to open up the plan that i want to show you bigger plan so it takes a second so i'm opening up a layout page and i'm going to use this to show you a little bit of plan view stuff so what do you guys got on your list well i got a few things but if renee's game i think we should move on to save plan views because right. we only have it like less than a half an hour left yep yep so but first let me cover this one last thing so when you have a layout every viewport on your layout is linked to a plan somewhere unless of course you've just copied and pasted a picture onto the thing. So when I click on this floor plan, I can now open it to dialogue and you're going to see this looks a little different than it used to. Link, it says linked view, okay? Linked view. And what I can do is say, you know, if I looked at this and I, the view name is my architectural plan quarter inch. Well, let's say, you know, I really want to show my electrical plan in that view. So what I could do is go relink it to um, a different view in that plan. So if I choose electrical now, it's going to show up differently on my floor plan. Not only that, but I can also go here and relink it to a different plan at the same time. So again, don't be doing separate electrical plans from your plan. Everything needs to be drawn in one plan and use plan views to just uh, define the different views. But you could switch it to a different plan if you wanted to which is, this is new, this is really nice, I like that. Um, 
although actually it's not necessarily new. We just used to do a little bit differently. Um, and then when I click OK and I click OK, you'll see that now the electrical plan will show up here instead of, oh, I didn't do electrical on the second floor. <clears throat> let's go change the floor too. So I go here and let's go make it the first floor. That's where the most, that's where the electrical was done. So same viewport, I just changed what shows up in it. Okay, so that's a, a new thing uh, in uh, X14 is the way you do this. You'll also see here that you have what's called the box scale or the viewport scale. Um, and you can change that from this dialog now, as well as you can still use the little ruler icon here to change the, the scale of the box that you have. You can make it whatever scale you want or no scale. All right. So again, it's not a big thing, but it's just a little different. So I thought I'd show that to you guys. There's there's more though, Dan. Click on that again and go back to that linked view. <clears throat> you can also link it to to the different uh, camera or a detail. Go to the. You are correct, and that is really also another cool thing. So that was where is that again? Relink. 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 Yeah. So if it's a 3D view, yeah, here's your project. You can link it to anything. You can Across link it. Any plan. Any, yeah, any viewport can be linked to any view, any plan, any. So if I wanted to link that view to a camera, let's just do that here. Let's see what comes up. I have some pretty wild compounding link things I've done before. <laughs> And if you have the label set up right, it'll auto automatically label it with the right schedule and the right page. That yeah, it's on. yeah. And X14 gave us the ability to reference floors in macros, so you don't actually need to have a save plan view that uh, save for every floor. Because um, if you write a custom label macro, like I have it in my layout uh, labels, that it will automatically pull what floor it is, unless it's labeled foundation or framing, and then it doesn't label the floor. So um, you can do some pretty cool stuff with the new macro designations with floors in, in X14. What did, my, what did I do? <laughs> I'm stuck in a menu oh, it's, here. Oh, it's giving you, yeah, you got to pick something. <laughs> what am I picking? Um, Just press missing okay. the lighter set. Yeah. Framing. It's saying what? it's missing one of your sets that what you're referencing, it? I think. Um, I just want to get out of this. Oh. You can just press okay. I'm pushing okay or cancel. Nothing. Yeah, you know what? Escape. It's an infinite loop. I got stuck in this once. All right, here we go. Let's get out of here. Start over. All right. Um, I hit undo there and something wacko happened. I'm not sure what it was. Um, let me get back into that plan. Right. All right. So, John, why don't you explain what plan views are? Oh, thanks, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to this one, though. This this has to do with the labels. Um, Alan got stuck on this. Oh, okay. Go ahead. You, if you go to the go to the plan view and open or the the um, viewport and go okay. to the label for it. I'm reopening it right now. Just give me a second here. <clears throat> I, I had even done this a half a dozen times and came back to it another time and lost it couldn't figure out where it was what do so, we want to do so just don't click on the viewport and go to label and go to label and then go to click on call out use call out and link yeah go, click on that and then here you'll have a list of things the call out label is set up here you know that what goes inside the circle is set up here but the text that goes on the line is set up in attributes so go click okay. on attributes, and this will this is where you set up what you want above and below the line for the call out for a viewport label. God, I haven't even looked at this yet. Put on the text above line. That's what would go above the line. Text below line is what goes no. below the line. This we could do a whole another session on this. This uh, can yeah. get really complicated. Yeah. It can also be very should. powerful. But this Thank could be automatic now. And it will, yeah. not, you know, what we see right, right here will be automatic with your viewports. And it'll also keep your page numbering 
up to date. Right. But what, architectural what plan quarter inch and quarter inch equals one foot is set up right here in attributes. Right. So and this the is three. The three in the circle is set up under call out. OK, so this is my plan view. Right. That's where that text is coming from. And I or your CAD I detail or your picture or right. whatever. And then this is the scale I've sent it to the layout on. So that's putting it in there automatically. Um, that's cool. I like this. I'm going to have to play with this. I've not even been in this menu yet. Reference. Yeah, it's, so we're using some macros here, it looks like. Okay. Yep. All right. So, Very cool. All right. Again, we don't have a lot of time here, so can't really spend yeah. much time on this. But that's nice. I, I, I don't know if that helped, Alan, or not, but... Here's here's a here's a question to start off start us off on save plan views. Okay. Plan view is great. I still have some issues with text from one plan view showing up unwanted on another plan view. We're turning it off affects both plans. I fixed that with text layers that are unique to the plan view: foundation, text basement, text main floor, text floor one, framing, text right. Or is this right or wrong? Did it work? <laughs> then it's right. <laughs> uh, that is the exact philosophy I used for all of my plan views, to be perfectly honest. So I wanted to make um, my plan views as simple as possible to understand. All right. Um, for me, it works great. And I, John, you you said you like the way I did it too. Renee, yeah. you used differently. So um, I said it worked. <laughs> perfect. Then it's right. Uh, well, well, let me show you a little bit about how that how that happens here. So the way you think about plan views is if you had a plan on your desk that was printed out and you were looking through the pages, those are plan views. What are the different plans you're looking at? Or think of it as vellum. You've got the floor plan view, and then you stick it on top, and you do that, and you add the electrical. You stick another page on top, and you do the framing. Uh, those are all plan views. So just in its simplest sense, that's all we're really trying to do is make that simple. Um, you always, always do your entire plan in one plan, with the exception of as built and options. OK. In other words, when you're working on a plan, <clears throat> everything gets done in one plan file. You don't have separate plan files for the plumbing and electrical and heating. Again, I'll, I'll tell my story. I always tell about this years ago. I went in the contractor's office. Um, we needed some help fixing up a plan for a big kitchen that they were working on. Real nice plan. The person had. Um, created the plan, created a demo plan, did a copy of it, added the cabinets, did a copy of that, added all the framing, did a copy of that, all the, added all the electrical and notes like that, did a copy of that, adding all the furniture and things like that. Had five or six different plans for the same project, okay? So in, instead of me having to go in and change one plan to make the changes he wanted, I had to change six separate plans, all right? Don't do that. If you're finding yourself do that, you call me and I'll help you figure out what not to do. All right. Because you're wasting a boatload of time. Uh, the contractor on this particular case, I explained what happened. He goes, oh, that's why it took her so long to finish the plans all the time. And she did a great set of plans. She just didn't understand layers. Layers are an integral part of plan views. OK. And we also have a thing here called defaults. And then we have this drop down here called plan views. Now, my toolbar is set up with the um, extended tool configuration okay the extended tool configuration and that's why you see more icons and you see all three of these drop downs all right that's that's the way that i've set mine up so when i, I go ahead john yeah i was just gonna say go through that what you just did there you you had changed it to all layers on and then it kind of messed up your save plan view so when right. you <clears throat> went back to fix it you went back to the save plan view so the way i've set mine up here is if you look at any of these lists they're exactly the same okay with the exception of these a couple different layers here 
layers, all layers off and on. You won't find that on this list or this list. All right. Because I, you don't need them for that. I only use these when I'm looking for something in a plan and I can't find it. I go to all my layers on and then I go look for the item I'm looking for. First, I'll hit select all and hit make sure this is a check mark. And now everything that's in my plan will be on. OK, everything. So if I can't find it now, all right, it's not in my plan. It's gone. So I'm going to have to redraw it or redo it. And then after I'm done using that, all I do is go back here and click this to redo this so everything gets put back in the same box. All right. So this is our layers. This is what we use to turn things on and off in our plan to use different size text for labels, um, different size text for other elements in our plan. Um, this is what we use to, um, you know, show framing versus electrical. So we just turn all the different elements in our plan on and off. And Chief allows us to set up groups of layers called layer sets where everything's predetermined. All right. So in other words, so if I were to go look at here and I switch this to framing, you're going to notice that um, all of my cabinets are turned off, but all my framing would be turned on. If I switch this to cabinets, you'll notice that all my cabinets are turned on. It's NKBA. So now all my cabinet things are turned on. All my framing stuff is turned off. So that's how we can create these groups of items turned on and off. Each of those can have different line styles. We can have different line weights. We can have different text sizes associated with the different views that we're working on. So here, when I say I have a view that's um, uh, an architectural plan that's half inch versus a quarter inch, the only really difference between those two is the size of the text that get used on labels and okay, the door labels, window labels, cabinet labels, things like that. So that's really the big difference between those. Really nothing else is turned on or off. So when I also when I type text, it's going to be a different size. So that's layers. Layers are control what you see on the screen. Defaults, this list right here. So when I click on that little wrench right there, default sets control what things are going to be when you add them to your plan. So when I when I'm on my architectural plan and I'm going to dimension, what size do I want my dimensions to be? What do I want them to look like? What kind of arrowheads do I want? When I add text, what layer do I want it to be on? All of that good stuff. So these things are all preset up for the type of plan that I'm trying to create. So if I'm trying to create an electrical plan, when I type electrical, when I type notes for my electrical plan on the screen, I want it to be on the right layer. So when I show my electrical items, you know, from up here, remember I showed you electrical, the electrical text will be turned on. And it'll well, be now, the right Dan, side. Dan, I got it. Can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, go ahead. So default sets kind of became obsolete with the exception of different print sizes because you could set up all your defaults in an electrical save plan view now and you wouldn't need an electrical default set unless it was at all a right. different print size. Let, let me ask you this, okay? Because I know we, we, we haven't really, uh, your template's a lot different than mine when it comes to the, the this, uh, when it comes to plan views. Yeah. Um, uh, and we haven't talked about this yet. So and we don't have time to talk about it today right here. Yeah, in the this, show. Is a big, this is a big but, topic, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, it is a big topic, but isn't this list of items the same that we get from over here um, when we go to our, um, let me go to, where am I looking for? I'm looking for plan Yeah, views. I mean, my Look templates like, have only the one required default set. You don't actually need any default sets um, unless you just want them to be able to switch your um, print size on the fly. <clears throat> All right. So isn't this list the same as the list that comes from up here? Yeah. So if you switch to a saved plan view workflow, you no longer need, it's not required that you have any default sets except for one. All right. We're going to talk about that. Not today though. <laughs> yeah. You, you, can take, you can take Dan, you can take what Dan's done and plug it in here. And it's doing basically the same thing that you've done. Yeah. 
I had to do it this way. We didn't have a choice when I set right. this template up. Yeah. Right. So, so, so it's probably if you think something. of if you think of saved plan views as default sets plus then add in that we can save a zoom level or we can save a floor reference or we can save a reference file in saved plan views. And that's just on top of what default sets give you. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, we'll come back to that, Renee. Um, and we will have that discussion at some point here because I, um, I've been intrigued by the way you do your stuff and it is a little bit different than the way I do it. But in the meantime, let me just see if I can get people to yeah, understand yeah, yeah. what plan views are and why you need them. The bottom line is that when I switch to one of these, when I switch to something else here, it's going to switch this to the right layer set and it's going to switch it to the right items that I'm going to put in my plan. Okay. So here it should have switched here. It's going to be electrical. All right. Now back to Mike's question about he created all these different things for that. Absolutely. You have to have, um, you're going to have to have, if you're, if your electrical text only shows up on your electrical plan, absolutely. That text is going to have to be on its own layer. So when I go down here to text, you're going to have to have a layer for your electrical text. Okay, so that's that's a given. Okay, so all the text you used on the different kinds of plans, yes, you will need a separate item on the on the layer list for those items, so you can specify which plan they're going to show up on. I, I think one great thing to note, because for some reason this this really passes by people, is that remember to change your plan view as opposed to something else when you want to. Go work on your electrical. Change right. your plan view so, to the electrical. Plan exactly. View. Yeah. Don't don't people that have been using the program for a long time and haven't adopted the plan view set yet are, are used to changing the layers because that's all we had years ago mm -hmm. was just the layer list. We didn't have these other options, so right. people got used to using. It took me a while to get used to not using layers to change my thing. John, you know how I fought this plan view shit for years. Oh yeah, he's my yeah, friend. I do. And then finally one day it hit me. Okay. I get it now. Let's use so, it. It works. So and so go back to your. I did this. I did this with a client the other day, and it really helped him. Uh, go to your architectural set or your architectural save plan view. Okay, hang on a second here. Our architectural save plan view. This no, one right save here. plan view, not your default set. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So go to that and put an outlet in here. Right. So when I and try to place an outlet say, here. It's going to pop up a little menu here. The layer so, electrical is not displayed. Right. You so what really helped them is I explained what yes does, what no does, and what cancel does. Right. If you hit so, cancel, it's not going to it's not going to place it. Right. If you hit yes, it's going to open that layer on this save plan view, which is not what you want to do. So let me hit yes, and I'll show people. So I hit yes. Remember, I showed you in a separate electrical plan, but now yet yeah, now I've got all my electrical outlets on here. Okay. And now you've just changed your save plan view and it's not going to warn you when you do it because you haven't changed your, your layer set. You've just turned something else on. I just turned on, I turned on the electrical for my architectural plan. All right. And then the other option when you do that, I'm just going to hit undo there is to say no. And that will place the outlet. They'll place the outlet on okay. and it will show up on your electrical Save plan right. view. So that outlet is there, but it's not showing. If I switch to my electrical plan, that outlet will be there now. Okay. So I don't know if that helped anybody today, but it it <clears throat> it uh, clicks some buttons for this the other guy. Was yeah, with, so. this is one of those light bulb kind of functions in Chief that you use it and use it, and finally it goes, oh, now I get it. Yep. Um, you know, I have that with people. There's some other things in chief roofs are one of those things where you get light bulb moments all the time and how it works. Uh, there's lots of things in this program that are like that. So um, I hope that helped. We got any questions? And, and again, let me show before I do questions, let me show one more thing. If I go to the layout here again, um, any viewport, as we just showed before. Um, so if I want to take this viewport and show my electrical plan in it, but not on this page, I want to leave this page alone. I'll just hit copy and I'll go, let's go paste that on a blank page. If you go up your ways to a blank page, 
and I'll paste and hold that in the same position that it's in. Okay, so I go up to edit, paste and hold position. And then I'll just change what shows up in this viewport based on my plan views. Okay, so Everybody rewind that. That is great, a great workflow. Yes, so, um, and that's why I always put that icon on my layout page on well, every page. I don't know why Chief doesn't put that there by default because um, it's you know, the paste and hold position icon. Pff, use it all the time. Can, can I just say that one again? Yeah. I'm just going to repeat it through voice. Send one view to layout, copy it, go to another page, paste, hold, change the referenced view. Now you have your views are lined up. Um, if you have a good label system, your label is automated. That's a yeah. great workflow. Yeah. So you can do that. again, you can do that with anything. Now you can do it with your cameras. So you could have four, four viewports, the same size on a page and throw a camera in there and resize the camera inside of that. Um, and change the, change the view, you know, change which yeah. one you're using or a CAD detail. And in X14, we have the recentering the view uh, yes. of your yeah. layout, oh, yeah. which is a huge. We didn't get a chance to talk about that. Yeah. We, so when I look at my layout now, because I use paste hold position, when I go through the different views, so here's my uh, foundation. There's my first floor. See how they're all nicely lined up. They're not jumping all over the place. It used to drive me nuts. And it would used to take me forever. I'd have to go point to point. I'd, I'd, the way I used to have to do is I'd put a little line here and then I would go line that all my views up to the end of that line it's like ugh. i mean still point to point but it was extra work that wasn't necessary so um so that's kind of cool all right so uh, here's, we're about here's done a question. Here, so yeah why do you have three boxes and he, he asked with the layers in each why don't you explain your three box your save plan views your default set and your layers up there why you did it the oh way the way it. i did it um i kind of just texted out a response if you want to pin it too it helps okay. what's that now right here renee responded to him by text oh okay um i did it this way so that there's no confusion okay when you switch to a plan view if those all say the same thing then you're good to go that's why I did that. Okay, so that means that my plan view is coordinating with my text and my uh, dimensions, everything, and it's, com uh, it's also with the right layers. Okay, all that layers set to named a little bit differently. So that's why I did that. It's just when I set this up uh, years ago, that just made perfect sense to me. And it really has worked, it served me well. The thing that always drove me nuts was when Chief, would, this would switch to um, default something or another, and then I'd switch this and that wouldn't change. And I'd type text and anyway, it was just confusing as hell. But again, that's what we'll, we'll get on with Renee here. We're gonna figure out what he's doing. Um, other questions, we've got a couple minutes left. Um, no, I don't think so, I think. So go play with it. Um, drop me a line with your favorite things that you've liked about the new update. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really talk about uh, linked callouts, and that's you could kill again. it at noon talking about that. Yeah, I um, mean, again, there's so much in this. I mean, we're in version 24 now, guys. That's this program is maturing like crazy. Okay, into a you you want to put my program. um. I'm uh, huh? oh, sorry, Dan. I interrupted. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you want to put my webcam front and center and I'll show up just what a linked call out is real quick. You, you have I'll put you you have to share your screen. Let's see. <clears throat> I just need to turn off. So anyway, the program's grown to a lot. It's got a lot of function in it. So yeah, I mean, again, it's still easy to use, relatively easy to use for beginners to get into. You got those good functions, but you know, as advanced users, there's just so much you can do with it now. And I think, Renee, I think we consider you an advanced user, don't we? Um, <laughs> let's see here. I need to. Here's a question. How do I? Oh, I got to remove the source files for the as built versus new separate.
plan files or different layers? Depends on what you want to show, Nick. If you want to show like a um, a hatched as built, then yeah, you might change the layer set um, of the referenced file. Yeah, what we were showing earlier though, it was two different plans. And then can you just show your screen? Well, you see, the way your cameras are set up. Um, oh, you can't just pin my camera to full screen. Um, let me see. Can I solo layout? Here we go. There we there go. We go. All right. Um, this is just my my template, and it and it just has this new linked call out that has yeah. a, a leader arrow. So if we open this up, this is just the call out with a cross section line with an arrow. That's new in X14, which is awesome. And then this links to a detail in my plan. So all I did was double click it. Same as just, um, you know, opening in your edit, edit bar of the view. Right. So that's linking to a CAD detail window. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and this is, you could kill a whole hour session talking about the capabilities of that. Yeah. So then so, you, you put cool. that, send that CAD detail to a, to a layout and it yeah. populates the page number and. Yeah. And then kind of something I was mentioning earlier is um, this is a, this floor, this save plan view is titled floor plan, but you see it says first story. So we have some new capabilities in the macros. Um, and if I want to change, you know, the reference or the linked view, relink it to something, I could change it to a second floor if there's one there. I could change it to foundation, you know, um, right here on the fly. So we can change floor levels on the fly uh, of an existing save plan view. So you no longer have to save a saved plan view for floor one versus floor two. Um, it's a little bit advanced trying to get this all set up, but I have a macro in here that it looks for terms like foundation and then it, it, it omits what floor that is. So you can truly automate a, a set of plans pretty quickly mm -hmm. now in X14. And I think we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah, we already ran out of time. We could probably talk all afternoon, I'm sure, um, which we probably wouldn't be a problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we got one, one uh, somebody in here asking us just to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why sometimes when plan view is selected, does using standard defaults show in the default window? <clears throat> And that's again? um that's again that this is that area between where renee is and where i am that i don't necessarily get why they do it like that but again nice. we'll come to that but let me test what I happens is, it. what happens is in my estimation is let me show my screen here um when uh when i set up my plan views okay so if i go in here and i look at this um i've set up all my, my all of my plan views are are hard i'll call it hardwired or whatever you want to call it so when you open up this architectural view it's going to open up this architectural um default in this architectural um uh, layer set i've got them all hardwired so when you choose them they're always going to open those chiefs don't do that in that when you choose a different plan view um some of the defaults up here again i don't you know i don't have a real explanation you, for it it's when but, you change the layer set dan that it changes if you go change the layer set you're going to get a use the default yeah. layer but yeah i, I really default. worked hard to get it so that when you change it always stays the same because I've always found that extremely confusing when I'm working on something and it says default up there. And then I add an outlet and it says, you want to turn that layer on? And it's like, huh? Anyway. So if, if you're using Dan's template, the thing to keep you happy is to keep these three names, the, the plan view, the default set, and the layer set, the same thing. Yeah. And then you'll be a happy camper. Yeah. Anyway, we'll bring more. We'll bring more later. All right. Real quick. Uh, let's wrap it up here. Um, if you guys want to, I'm just going to bring this up and mention it. All right. Uh, February, I remember the date, second, third week of February. We're going to West Virginia Beach. I have reserved this 24 bedroom house. <laughs> and we're going to have a total immersion week long event. 
where we'll have unlimited time in that week to discuss everything that we're talking about. So um, this is happening. Mark that on your calendar. I'll be in, in, I'll be uh, introducing it soon. John and Renee will be there along with with uh, Robin, and uh, we're gonna have fun. This is an amazing facility. So if you go to the gallery, it's Black Stallion. You search for that, and again, it's it's just uh, it's really an incredible facility. I can't wait to go here. This is gonna be cool. We got my brother and sister coming to. Take care of everybody like we've done at the at the um, builder shows we've got tons of room to set up and do our trip you know have our classes and everybody gets their own room so i'm excited about this it's be you don't sound excited enough well <laughs> it's it's you're right i don't partly because i got a lot of work to do for together yeah, yeah i know it <laughs> so so anyway guys this is going to be awesome we're going to be there um we're going to be yeah. teaching classes and also you can come talk to us in between classes we might be floating around the house doing well, whatever we might have to cut you off at one in the morning but yeah yeah you know. that's where you know in all these events that i've done over the years that's the place where people have really learned some really cool things is when you're sitting on a little side chat with a bunch of you know a couple of people and you're going over things and you the light bulb well you can see the light bulbs going on left and right it's pretty cool um but uh yeah i, I could hit fun. you guys with more goofy hacks than you can even fathom <laughs> come come hang could. out <laughs> we're gonna call you hack master i think yeah <laughs> So, all right. So, do you have a link for it yet, Dan? No, I don't have anything prepared yet. So, okay. and what were the dates again? Um, yeah, I'll bring it. We're gonna do calendar. it. Do it for two weeks in a row, one week at a time. <clears throat> right? It's, yeah, it's in February twelfth to the nineteenth, and nineteenth to the twenty-sixth. So, two different sessions, one week, yep. one week each. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. I hope we yeah. get enough. And, and we're going to be doing um, different types of classes both weeks, kind of? Or I don't know yet. I haven't figured all that out yet. Either. So, I mean, if, I, if I any, think I'm going to be at the Builder Show, uh, what is it, a couple weeks prior or something? Uh, about a month prior to that, yeah. Yeah, I'll be at the yeah. Builder Show too if you guys are at the Builder Show. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to try to get to the Builder Show, but I'm not doing, we're not doing uh, classes yeah. or anything like we've done in the past. Um, it started out where I couldn't get the, house that I wanted. Um, and then I thought, oh, hell, let's just go look somewhere else. And I found this place online and it's off season and it works for pricing and it's going to be good. Got a nice big swimming pool in the backyard, but it's not going to be heated. No, the spa right. will be though. Maybe even functional. I'm not sure, but no, it won't. You won't be able to use the pool. No. We're not there to swim. That's right. That's right. We're, we're there to swim and all of the chief knowledge that would be around. <laughs> <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. All right, you guys. Thanks for being here today. Um, look forward to uh, to uh, next show coming up in a couple of weeks. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, let us know. So you guys take care. Bye, everyone.